What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So I saw this really amazing artwork by this guy called Arthur Gutsy. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm butchering your name. Uh, but yeah, he did this really cool uh, cloth animation inside of Houdini. And I was wondering if we could get a similar results to him using just Cinema 4D. Uh, so yeah, I feel like I was able to get something pretty close. Uh, I think the fidelity of his one is better just because you know, it's done on Houdini. It seems like you're able to have a little bit more control, especially over the actual connecting the the connectors to the cloth. Uh, I think that's where most of the problems lie in my one. But yeah, I think we were able to get pretty close. Uh, so yeah, please go support Arthur. I, I should have his information up on screen. I think his Instagram is art at gutsy. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I'll have it up on the screen. Uh, yeah, please go support him. Uh, so yeah, before we get started, if you're interested in like project files, I've got a Patreon up. And yeah, if you're interested in some other tutorials, I've got some on my Patreon, but it's mainly project files over there. So yeah, if you're interested in that, please consider supporting me. But if not, a like and subscribe does go a long way. But yeah, for that to any do, let's get into it. Cool, so let's start out over here by just doing the basics of just getting a plane. And if you have to look at this now, there's not many segments, so let's increase this to about 100 by 100. Cool, so that's going to be the basics of our uh, cloth over here. Let's go and zoom in and create our little connector. So it's just doesn't have to be amazing. We will replace it just now, uh, visually at least. So let's just check. We want it to at least go that it's like almost touching the other polygons over here. So just make sure that the size is pretty decent. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but something like that should be perfect. Cool. So now we want to have it that this is able to connect to our cloth over here. Let's go and first of all make this a cloth. And on our spline, let's go simulations and add a rope. Then let's also go to simulations and add a no, a collider, a connector. And now if we actually press play, it's just gonna fall down and nothing's gonna happen. So we wanna make sure that this is actually connecting to this. So first of all, let's just go to our mix animation up here and turn on this with pins. This will just tell the computer that we're still act having this act as rope, but don't move it at all, make it stay in place. Cool, so now we're able to mess around with our connector over here. So with, if we uh, select our connector, we'll notice that nothing changes. We can turn on this update live, and now you can see we have these old connections. So if we had to just press play now, it connects, but look, it just falls, and that is not the result that we're looking for. Cool, so we can fix that by increasing our search radius. I think so, Mike. That should be good. And then it's going to make this four so we have something like this. And now if we press play again, it falls and it connects. So it is a bit bouncy over here. Uh, for some reason it stretches. I haven't been able to figure out how to really solve that, especially if you're using just one connector. Uh, you'll see just now when we add a bunch more connectors that it doesn't bounce as much, but it still does have a bit of bounce. Uh, the best way I could go about it uh, was going into simulations and then just turning up the number of sub steps to sound like 25 and you can see it has a little bit less of bounce it's maybe 30 but it still has this kind of bounce to it so yeah if you guys know how to stop that uh yeah share it in the comments because i mean but for now it should be fine because for the result that we're trying to do it doesn't really affect it too much uh so yeah now let's have it and grab our spline and throw this in a cloner Let's bring our cloner down a bit and something like that should be good. Cool. So now let's drag these and put it on top of the cloner. Let's select our connector over here and let's turn on the update light just on and off over there. You'll notice with most things, just make sure that if you do any change, just either click on this update live or click on this create and then it should redo this. Cool. Let's place play now and now look. They stick together and that looks really cool. Cool, so now let's create something that's gonna pull our strings upwards. So let's go to this view 
and let's create another rope. So this doesn't have to be perfect. Something just like this should be perfect for what we're trying to do. Let's just grab these top ones and bring them quite high up. Cool. Let's duplicate our cloner over here. Delete this line and put this line in it. So let's just rename this rope and this one connector. Cool. So we can delete the connector off of this one and we can go into our connectors over here and turn on this with pins and turn it off. So now when we press play, it should act like cloth up and they're losing it. Do you know why that's happening? It's because we need to go over here and click create again. And now when you press play, perfect. So this looks cool and all, but there's not much detail in it. So let's fix that. Let's go over here. Let's change this to something about 100 and this to about 10. Let's also change the thickness to about 0.5. And now let's see. Nice, that gives us a much more realistic result. Cool, so now we want to have it that these ropes are slowly pulling it up so we can get this effect kind of like what Arthur did where it's lifting up at different points. So with our rope um, cloner <laughs> selected, let's go over here to MoGraph and select shader. In our parameters, let's turn off scale, turn on position, and let's set this to about 150. Then in our shading tab, let's go and add some noise. We can just stick with the default noise over here. You can always change it. Um, the last thing about doing noise is that you can just change between the different noises and see which one like suits the look that you're going for. But I think for us, uh, just a normal noise at 500 should work. Let's set the animation speed to 1.5 and let's see how that looks. Nice, so that's perfect. You'll notice one thing though, is that as soon as we press play, it's gonna start over here, which means that uh, our connectors are going to be lost. So one way we can get around this is just by going into the shader over here and just animating this from 0 to 150. So now it slowly raises up. I really like that, but I mean, if you don't like that, you can always just start the animation at frame 16. Uh, cool, so let's see what this looks like. Let's go, press play. And now look, it lifts it up. And now we get this really, really cool result. Cool, so we want a lot more detail in our cloth over here. So let's go to our cloth and let's change this to 200 by 200. And if we had to press play again, you'll notice that we lose all our connections. All we need to do, uh, first of all, you can see what's kind of happening over here. So uh, just like in Houdini, every single one of these polygons is given a number. And so then when we change it from 100 to 200 polygons, now say now this, let me show you. So say now this one was number polygon 100. When we bring this to 200 by 200, that 100 is going to be brought over here, if that makes sense. Cool, so the only fix that we need to do is just click create again. And now let's press play. And let's just hide our lines. And look at that. We get a really beautiful cloth animation with a lot more detail in it. So this looks nice, but we want to make it a little bit bigger. And luckily, because we're doing it procedurally, we can easily make it bigger. Let's go over here and make this like 600 by 600. I think that should be big enough. And then let's go four by four. And then this one also, four by four. So I'm looking over because my camera's over here and I can't see the, there we go. Cool. And once again, we need to make sure that we click on this um, creates connectors. And let's also actually increase this to maybe 300. And once again, let's see. Nice, it should be a lot slower now, but we're still getting it to see in like moderately real time. And look at that. That is super cool. Really beautiful. Uh, so yeah, one thing when it came to like the rendering of this that I really struggled with was the fact that we have our connectors over here, but you can see it's kind of breaking through. So the way that I kind of got about that is definitely not the the best way of doing it, but it was a way of doing it. Um, so let me show you how I did that. And let's just hide all of this for now. And we can use this 
Let's just bring this down, something like that. Let's just also do something like that. And bring this down. Cool. Then let's throw this into our... Uh, let's go... Nature videos. Cool. And then with this, let's go and add a sweep. And let's throw a rectangle in there. So it's one by one. Okay. Something like that. And set point five. And this is the correct one. And eight one by two. Something like that. This will also just rotate section. Oh, that's that should be fine. Cool. So this back in our connector over here. And now, it's definitely not the best way of doing it, but now at least we have some geo over here. And we can just hide this connector for now and pretend as if this is the thing that's holding it up. It's definitely not the best way of doing it, but uh, yeah, I was able to get away with it and make it look pretty decent. Um, let's see if we can fix these kind of escaping for a bit. So, I mean, in my final render, there are little bits of pieces that do kind of go out, but luckily with the way that I shot it, I was able to kind of avoid using that, even with the close-ups, um, I made sure that I was choosing a point in time where it wasn't going through. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you are able to kind of fix this. I mean, I think if we messed around a little bit more with uh, the cloth over here, and then maybe also just did a few more iterations, we should be able to fix this problem. Uh, but yeah, I think for the gist of it, this is pretty much the effect. Yeah, I mean, like, look at that. I think that has solved our effect just by adding in some more subdivisions. Nice. There we go. I mean, substeps. Cool. And now we have this really cool result. So we can change up the way that this moves just by going into our shader and changing the type of the noise. We can also change the, um, the height that it goes up and the speed at which it goes up. So one other thing you can do if you want to, I didn't do it for my render just because I didn't feel like it was necessary, but maybe you guys want to do this, um, is if you want to make these ropes over here dynamic. Because at the moment, uh, let's just turn everything off, they are very stiff and that doesn't look uh, very nice. I mean, for what I was trying to do, it was perfect because, you know, it's if something heavy is at the bottom of the rope, it will put it quite tight. But if you want to have it where these are actually interacting, say now with like wind or something, let me show you how we can do that. So let's go over here, make sure these are um, pinned. And with our original spine selected, let's go and add a vertex map. Cool. And then let's add a yeah, linear field should be good. Let's change this to plus y. Uh, minus Y. Something like that. And let's just make sure that all of these are going to act like that. If I did this, will it affect all of them? Uh, let's find out. And then over here in our mix animation, let's drag in this. Let's see what that looks like. Let's just add some turbulence to the scene just so we can see what's happening cool and so now you can see that they are moving around but they are very stiff uh, it's a very easy feed fix let's go over here change this from adaptive to something like maybe natural and let's increase this to maybe something like uh, 25 should be good and now look we have some nice loose strings and we get this really cool result so let's see what it looks like all together now if we had to Turn all of this on. Nice. Uh, the only problem with this way is that without G over here, this won't really work. So you'll have to just um, add some like splines to our original connectors up here. They might not look very nice, but depending on how you shoot it, you can probably hide it. 
uh, yeah, that's one thing where it's just like when it comes to Houdini, I think you'll be able to use these connectors a lot more efficiently. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Uh, so yeah, if I am doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments and yeah, tell us how to do better. But yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't really think you need the turbulence, but hey, if you wanted to have it where these ropes are acting quite natural, then this is a pretty good way of doing it. And also you see that now it sways together. So I mean, we could have the sprites drastic and they will still stay together. You might have little things like that where it does come undone. Let's see if it does. Actually, no, it seems like it's fine. Yeah, you're able to get this really cool result pretty easily and pretty quickly. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, yeah, don't forget to support the original artist. Uh, yeah, he made some amazing work. Uh, he's a Zemudini, but yeah, go support him. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget if you're interested in the Patreon, link is in my bio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But until next week, peace.